The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Though we are physically distanced from each other, we are the body of Christ, connected and bound together in our common baptism through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, created in the image of God as mind, body, spirit, people. This opportunity gives us a set-aside time to join together in the fullness of who we are present to one another in community and care. Even as we gather for this time of worship, while situated in many locations, we are joined as one through Jesus Christ. Friends, we begin our time usually with a time of announcements and prayer requests. There will be announcements and prayer requests on your screen. I would just tell you that this is Native American Awareness Sunday, so make sure if you want to give an offering to Native American Awareness that you mark that so that we know. And I want to thank all of those of you who are being faithful in giving to the ministry of the church while we are not able to be present here. In our prayer requests, we are reminded that Leonard Ruzika's burial was this week. The last time we met together in this place, Leonard was among us. And now he has gone on to glory. So please keep his family in your prayers.
friends, let us pray. Loving God, who speaks to us through your scriptures and in the collective wisdom of your people through the ages, help us hear anew what you would speak to us this day. For your word is always fresh, a message of life and hope in the world that needs to know and heed your will. Through Christ the living word and your spirit of illumination who with you is the truth that sets us free. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Luke's gospel. Last week we read from John. This week we read from Luke. And it is a familiar story to us of the two disciples who were on their way to Emmaus when Jesus surprised them a little. From Luke, the 24th, 24th chapter, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe at all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been, known, made, how he had been made known to them, in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the reading. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
When I am out of town and I meet someone for the first time, I never introduce myself using a title. When people don't know I am a pastor, they assume I am just a regular person, and I find out a lot about them as they talk. Once they ask me what I do, they are usually shocked and the conversation changes. Often they try to impress me with how religious they really are or they are totally embarrassed about their colorful language or about what they have just told me. It may be fun for me, but it isn't for them. I'm always surprised when people can't tell by looking at me that I'm a pastor because I almost always can tell when someone I meet is a pastor. But then I was often surprised when I moved back to Treyer and people didn't recognize me. True, I had been gone for 30 years, but I didn't think that I had changed that much. The story from Luke's gospel doesn't tell us how Jesus felt when the two disciples who were on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him. Was he surprised? Was he disappointed? Was it fun to take them by surprise? We just don't know. But what we do know is that those two were certainly not expecting Jesus to show up after being crucified and buried. This is Luke's account. Last week we read from John's account, and the names of the disciples there are better known to us. We often think that the twelve were Jesus' only disciples, but that wasn't true. There are here at least are two more, Cleopas and the other one, who is unnamed. The fact that that disciples is unnamed has led to speculation that perhaps the other one was Mrs. Cleopas. Could be, because Jesus certainly had women followers. This is still the day, or rather the evening, of the resurrection. The two from Emmaus were on their way back home, possibly disillusioned, probably grieving the loss of the one whom they had pinned all their hopes on. Alone on the road, they couldn't help but talk about the events of the past week in Jerusalem. They needed each other to grieve with. Their hopes had been dashed, and their time of following Jesus now seemed futile. In our story, this couple had lost hope. They were walking home to their village of Emmaus, returning to their former lives after years of following Jesus. They had given up. They had lost their confidence in the future. They had lost the way forward. So they decided to go back, back to the comfort of their past. They had hoped in Jesus, but now they had lost hope. They were feeling, well, lost until they were found by Jesus on the road. When they were at their lowest, Jesus found them and picked them up. When they were farthest from God, God in Jesus Christ came to them. They were on the road away from Jerusalem, away from Jesus, when Jesus found them on the road. The first thing that Jesus did was to open the Bible to them and tell them about himself explaining to them how this Jesus they were lamenting was really the Messiah of God. Verse 27 says, Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them things about himself in all the scriptures. Then they got home, and they invited him to eat with them. They still didn't know who he was, but they remembered Jesus' teaching about welcoming the stranger So they compelled him to come in. Then he fed them. Verses 30 and 31. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke broke it and gave it to them. When then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. We haven't been able to gather at the Lord's table for nearly two months. We haven't heard the formula He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them in all that time. And yet, it is familiar to us. Take, bless, 
break, and give. It is the formula that we also hear in Luke 9, almost word for word, when Jesus feeds the five thousands with five loaves and two fish. Verse 9 begins, And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. I have taken communion in many places and even in other countries. Most often, probably, I have taken communion right here in this worship space. I have also taken it with the Presbyterians and Rolf as we passed the bread and wine down the pew to share. I have taken it in an Episcopal church in Jerusalem where they use real wine and a common cup that was held by the priest as we drank. And as different as all those sacramental moments were, they are all connected to one important thing, that those of us who were there knew Christ in the breaking of the bread. In our gospel story, their eyes were opened in the breaking of the bread. They knew Jesus. They knew who he was. Perhaps they were there when the 5,000 were fed and they see an eerie similarity with his actions there that made them recognize him. Maybe something more mystical and mysterious happened. Either way, they know him in the breaking of the bread. This action of taking bread and blessing it and breaking it opened their eyes to who Jesus was and how he had died to save them. It also let them know that he is alive. He is risen. He was present in the world to give them life and joy and hope. So it is with us. When we participate in the breaking of the bread, we are reminded of what Christ did for us and of what he continues to do for us each and every day of our lives. The breaking of the bread gives us hope, for it opens our eyes to the living Christ in our midst. And don't we need that hope right now? Like the two from Emmaus, all our plans, for March and April at least, came to naught. What we had hoped for and planned for never happened. And it seems as if things will never be quite the same again. Maybe some of your friends or family have lost their jobs right now, and there is no hope of finding another, at least not right now. Or, on a lighthearted note, maybe you, like me, have watched your hair grow whiter and whiter, or grow down over your ears, with no hope of when you will be able to visit the hairstylist again. It's funny what little things make us feel so despondent. The world is full of people who have lost hope. The world is full of people who have lost a vision of goodness. The world is full of people who are wandering, dazed and confused down that road to Emmaus. The world is full of people who are looking for someone or something to lift them up and give them joy again. The world is full of soul-starved people in search of the true bread from heaven. We can't invite them to the table right now, nor can we invite them to even come to the building to worship. But the building, no matter how beautiful it is, is not the church. We are the church. Just as Jesus walked with the two in their time of grief and hopelessness, so we can walk with those who find themselves in hopeless situations. We can be the body of Christ, the broken body of Christ, to each other and to them. Receiving an email or a written note just when things look bleak can do wonders for people in the midst of their hopelessness. We can be the body of Christ, even when we are not meeting together. It may be a while, but when we walk with someone through their times of hopelessness, Eventually, they will recognize that it is really the risen Jesus walking with them. Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to a time of prayer. Our gracious eternal God, like these two on the Emmaus Road, we frequently walk along our roads of life in despair and without hope. Like them, we walk in sadness. Like them, we are impatient with those who do not understand life and events as we do. Like them, we reel and allow ourselves to be set back by disappointments. Like them, we fail to see the Jesus who would walk along with us. Like them, we too readily see evil triumph over good and think that is the last word. And like them, we too quickly and too easily succumb to hopelessness. Forgive our foolishness and resurrect our spirits so that we may see you in the breaking of bread, so that we may see you in our neighbors, and so that we may see you in the events of history and the events of each day. Remove our blindness so that our eyes may be opened and our spirits renewed and our minds astounded. We pray also for our world. Where there is conflict, bring peace. Where there is uncertainty and anxiousness, bring inner quiet. Where there is hatred, bring understanding and love. Where there is the terror of war, hover over your earth and bring a change to people's hearts. Where there is selfishness, bring generosity and a change of heart. Where there is peril, bring comfort and courage. We pray in the name of the risen Lord, and as he taught us, so now we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Traditionally, when we are gathered in our sanctuaries, we would take our offering here. An offering can consist of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. As you are able, I encourage you to continue to support the ministries of our local church. God of righteousness, God of mercy, with thanksgiving, we offer our gifts to do the things your heart longs for your church to do. Open our eyes to where you would use us. We pray in the name of our risen Savior, Christ our Lord. Amen. But thou art strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long As I walk, let me walk
life is o'er And time for me will be no more Guide me gently, safely And now, may God hear and respond whenever you call. May Christ Jesus make himself known to you in all things. And may the Holy Spirit open your eyes and set your hearts on fire with love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.